So welcome everybody. I'm here to tell you about the Eco Cocon Straw Panels, which is a Lithuanian product. It's made in Lithuania and shortly to be made in Slovakia as well. And we want it to be made in the UK as soon as we get enough turnover. So if anybody wants to invest in that sort of company, come and talk to me. And it's a very, very simple panel. It is exactly what you can see. It's four pieces of timber at the corners of the panel timber at the top and at the bottom and then plywood and it's screwed together with screws with big heads on that's it it's 98 percent natural timber and straw most of it's straw timbers all fsc certified the straw is tested for pesticides and fertilizers before it's used and there are never any residues so although it's used in the growth part of the of the straw they're no longer there when it goes into the panel and the straw is compressed from those big round bales so they're unrolled and they're put into the press so that is a, a sort of um, product secret at the moment how they do that but it's compressed into these panels to a density of 110 kilograms per cubic meter which is the same density that we get in a normal load-bearing straw house and at that density you can hear that's the thud of a dense straw at that density then you get the optimum insulation value and you get the best fire protection so there is not enough air in here to burn and all the fire tests prove it and there is enough air to give good insulation so you've got you've got the combination of fire protection and really good insulation and insulation does more than one thing. It doesn't just give you a U value. And that's the message we're trying to get out with all of the natural insulations is it's also a breathable system. So the natural fibers deal with moisture. You don't get interstitial condensation in these panels. It just does not happen. And the way that you put them together, the panels can be anything from 400 mil wide to 1.2 meters wide and they can be anything from 400 mil high to three meters but obviously you want to go more than three meters to build something taller and we just put them on top of each other they're just like giant building blocks you've all done it as kids you just put them together you cinch them together using cramps you screw them together using an impact driver with a long bit on it so there's a screw here you can see and you can see where the driver bit went in there and you just cinch them together using cramps using ratchet straps and you can get millimeter accuracy so you don't need to design what size the panels are we do that you just design a house that uses panels for the walls it's only a wall system it's not a roof system it's not a floor system and then we take your design and I work with you to make sure that you don't do anything that can't be done like having gaps that big or, or having very very steep pitch roofs but um, as long as we get over those those issues then our engineers work out what are the optimum sizes of panels for you to have so you don't have all your panels coming up to the floor first floor and then the others all going up beyond you might have quite a lot that come up taller and they mix, so they're interlaced, so you see a, a, a pattern, a jigsaw of how the panels go together. And we give you a color coordinated map of all the panels. So a lot of panels will be the same size, but some will be in the north wall and some in the south wall, some on the ground floor, some higher up. And so the map tells you where they should go and which wall they're in. So you get a color and you get a, um, a label which is on your map and it's on each panel as well. So it's all about, it's modular building systems. It's all about planning and logistics and getting that right. So it all comes on a big articulated truck and you offload it according to how you want to build the system. So on the inside, we would recommend using a wet clay plaster, but if you don't want to do that, then anything breathable can go on the inside. Any sort of panel system that has a good level of permeability can go on the inside but you've got to remember that with your paint systems as well there should be nothing that impedes that breathability 
the permeability throughout the whole wall. On the outside, if you're wanting to achieve passive house, then you'll need to use a membrane. So the outside skin is the airtight layer. So when you build them each day, you put your membrane around, which also gives you weather protection. You cover over your windows and doors, and you fasten the membrane on with five mil plywood pieces, which cover, so that in themselves is another protection for air tightness, which covers the joins between the timbers. These are all supplied as part of the package. And then onto that, you put, if you want to achieve the Passive House standard, 60 millimetres of wood fibre board. So this is a certified product. It will already go through the Passive House system if you follow these details. And 60 mil of wood fibre board is what you need on the outside. And then you've got choices. You can finish that off with a lime plaster or you can finish it off with timber cladding, ventilated timber cladding. And if planning a really jumping on you, you can put brick slips onto it or whatever, but we try not to go down that route. So lime plaster or ventilated cladding or mix and match would be the answer for the outside. And they have fire protection that the REI 120, so two hours of fire protection in all the tests that they've done. So two hours is not how long they will last in a fire, it's how long the test needs to be for. And what's important to recognise is that at the end of the two hour test, they turn the test off and the panels are not destroyed. And that is really different to a lot of other materials that they do the two hour test and at the end of the two hours, there's nothing left. It's all burnt to nothing. These are not. So we know that they will last a lot longer than two hours but we only have to do the two hour test. So what happens in a fire with, with monolithic straw like this, it's the same with the straw in the more normal um, load bearing or infill buildings, is that the density of the straw gives you the protection, just like large dimension timber does. So if you know about large dimension timber, in a fire, that, that timber, this straw, burns on the outside, it chars on the outside and then that charcoal actually protects the rest of it from burning. And when you look at the fire tests which are freely available on, on the Eco Cocon website, you can see that how that happens. When they turn it off you can see the charring but the structure is still there. So you've got a lot more protection than you might think. Structurally, we do all the engineering only on the timber frame, not the straw. Now, as a straw builder, I can tell you the straw itself is incredibly structurally strong. But for engineering, we don't take that into account. We just look at the double skin of timber. So it's a double skin timber frame, and that's what it's engineered on. So if we're doing taller buildings, because we can go five stories high, we can actually go 12 stories high or more depending on what the building regulations are. So in Sweden, they're about to build 12 storeys high. We can, get, we can get that by, on the ground floor, we make our panels narrower. So in effect, you've got more timber. And as you go up the building, we make the panels wider. And we can also put cross bracing into the panels, which you'll see round the corner on the lintel parts we can put cross bracing into the panels and all of that is done through the dialogue between the designer and us while we're working up the panel project. So the panel project is the key to it all. It's where we get all the engineering right. We need to know what your loadings are, what your, your wind and weather loadings are and then we work with you and your engineers to get that structure where it's needed in the panels. Windows and doors, if this was going to be a window, we would supply you with a plywood panel that goes on the inside. You would already have plywood on the top because it's the underside of the lintel and you would have plywood on the bottom because it's the top of the sill. So we supply you with two sides 
for the window or the door opening and then you simply fix your window to the outside timber. You cut through the membrane on the outside and do all your airtight ta taping. It's really simple and straightforward. And do your detailing with your wood fibre board around, around that corner and that's it. So it's, it's really straightforward to put windows and doors in. And you've got very solid fixings where you need to have them. So it achieves an air tightness of 0 0.6, which is the passive house standard, without blinking. And that's if you follow their, their details. But it achieves a very, very good air tightness value, even without all the wood fibre board and the membrane. There are lots of details to, on the website to show how the panels interact with your foundation and how they interact with the roof and how they interact with the floor. So there, there are, there's lots of really good information freely available for you to download. And if you can't find what you need, then you come to me and I'll give you what, find out the rest of the answers for you. Um, so uh, in Scotland, it's a bit more rigorous on building warrant, but we're, we've got our second house going through the warrant system there. So we are getting through those systems.